It's three o'clock on Tuesday, March 24th, and this is Observer Radio News. I'm Steve Darley. With me in the studio are Will Sen and Jenna Conter. It's beautiful and sunny in Toronto, and we're looking at a daytime high of four degrees. Our top stories this hour are Stephanie Rangel Killer is to undergo psychiatric testing, personal bankruptcies are on the rise in Ontario, and reports suggest that Raptor Chris Bosch is facing a child support lawsuit in the U.S. In a hearing to decide on sentencing, a judge has ordered the convicted killer of Stephanie Rangel to undergo psychiatric testing. The hearing was to decide whether MT faces sentencing as an adult. MT was 15 at the time of the crime and is still a minor. She was convicted of first-degree murder, and as an adult, she could face life in jail with no parole for at least five years. Her lawyer, Marshall Sachs, says that because she was under 16 at the time of the murder, she shouldn't be tried as an adult. As a minor, she would face five to seven years in jail, and she wouldn't have a criminal record when she walks free. A decision will be announced after the testing is complete. The federal government announced a $60 million package to help with benefit claims. A StatsCan report shows that personal bankruptcies rose by 20% over the last year. In total, 8,000 people are now bankrupt. The number of people claiming EI benefits also grew by 20%, with over half a million Canadians now receiving benefits. Manufacturing job losses are the main cause of the problems in southern Ontario. March break is fast approaching and many universities and colleges across Ontario will hold information sessions to draw in prospective students looking for the right school. But in this global economic recession with cutbacks, stimulus packages and deep dives on the market, it may be even more difficult to get a post-secondary education. Lauren Hummel has this report. I would take out a bunch of loans and then be broke as hell for like the next 10 years of my life. At the University of Toronto and other schools across Ontario, it might get a little more expensive to get that degree or diploma you want. A report released by the think tank Education Policy Institute in late February says it predicts that some universities and colleges are planning an increase in tuition within the next few years. Students might even see an increase of 25% in fees. For the average student taking a full course load at university, that means $1,000 more in tuition. Lana, a grade 12 student looking to attend the University of Ottawa in the fall, says she hopes that universities don't cut back heavily on scholarships and hike up tuition fees. If uh, schools, universities cut back on giving out scholarships, something that I heavily am relying on right now to be able to go to school and live on my own, as opposed to going to school around the area and staying home, then I would be burdened with debt. Many schools are running deficits and considering cutting back. They're also dealing with more students and aging infrastructure. Tuition increases are frozen at 5% until 2010, but it's unclear whether every post-secondary school will increase fees. The report recommends higher tuition to make up for budget restructuring and the chance the government might not chip in. The possible 25% increase could provide universities and colleges with more than $1 billion across Canada. Lauren Hummel, Observer Radio News, Toronto. The Ontario government threatens to tighten the laws around ticket resales to pr protect consumers, says a Canadian press report. Market leader, leader Ticketmaster also owns a site called Tickets Now, where event tickets are sold for many times the face value. Premier Dalton McGuinty asked Ticketmaster to stop reselling through tickets now. So far, the company hasn't changed their policy or the way they do business. McGuinty wants to make sure consumers are treated fairly and is ready to introduce legislation. Currently, there are two class action lawsuits in Ontario against Ticketmaster about the reselling issue. Finally, when does a Twitterer become a twit? Possibly when, when, he, when he is one of the most high-profile tweeters out there and none of his employees can read his updates. Toronto Mayor David Miller has become well-known for his regular tweets. The city, though, has a ban on social networking sites on its computers. Only the top 44 employees have open internet access. Critics such as City Councilor Rob Ford say that social networking is a waste of time. Miller and other supporters claim that the new technology is vital for modern-day networking and business. You're up to date with the news, and now over to Will with all the sports action. Thanks, Steve. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a packed schedule tonight in the NHL with eight games on tap. The Leafs are hosting Alex Ovechkin and the Washington Capitals at the ACC. Game time is 7 p.m. Three other Canadian teams are playing tonight, Edmonton, Vancouver, and Montreal. The Habs need a win after some dismal play down the stretch if they want to keep their playoff hopes alive. They're currently tied with Florida for 8th place in the Eastern Conference with 81 points. In basketball, the Raptors have the night off, but Chris Bosch could be very busy. Published reports surfaced today in the Toronto Star that the Raptors forward is facing a child support lawsuit in the United States. The court documents were filed in Maryland by lawyers for Bosch's former girlfriend, Allison Mathis. Bosch turns 25 today and is currently making $14 million playing for the Raptors this season. The documents allege that Bosch and Mathis made the decision to have a child and plan to marry. 
According to the documents, Bosch decided to leave the relationship after returning home from the Beijing Olympics. Mathis was seven months pregnant at the time. She was forced to move in with her mother because she could no longer afford her mounting hospital bills. Bosch spoke with reporters after today's practice. He says that he will take care of his responsibilities, but asks for privacy. The final World Figure Skating Championships before the 2010 Olympics began today in Los Angeles. Canada has medal hopefuls in all four disciplines. Ice dancers Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer are looking to improve on their silver medal performance during last year's event. Their compulsory dance goes today. Paris skaters Jessica Dubé and Bryce Davison are contenders for the gold medal after finishing third last year in Sweden. They also skate today. But most fans are looking forward to the Wednesday debut of national champion Patrick Chan. After two Grand Prix victories this season, Chan is a favorite to capture his first world gold medal. It seems the economy is affecting some businesses that teach Canada's favorite winter sport. In Pickering, one learned to skate company is worried about its future. Mallory Hendry has this report. Laurie's Learn to Skate is a staple in Pickering. For 25 years, the owners have taught children to sharpen their skills on the ice. While the winter session hasn't seen a drop in enrollment, the future isn't as certain for coming classes. Noelle Rosenthal is an instructor and a supervisor for Learn to Skate. She says parents have decided to stop lessons during warmer months. A lot of them are saying that they're going to take a break from skating for the summer, that they're going to save um, some money and just maybe focus on some more outdoor activities that they can do that they don't have to spend money on. Rosenthal says although winter encourages parents to get their children on the ice, many say the nice weather makes it harder to justify the expense of lessons. Five 40-minute classes will set you back around $140 per child. If enrollment doesn't pick up, Rosenthal says closing down some camps, such as the March break or hockey skills ones, is an option. Mallory Hendry, Observer Radio News, Pickering. And finally, baseball spring training continues today as the Blue Jays play host to Philadelphia. The score is currently 4-1 for the Blue Jays in, at the end of the fifth inning. And that's all from the world of sports. Stay with us after the break when Jenna Conter will have all the buzz and entertainment. Good evening. You are probably expecting me to say that my name is Count Dracula and that I am a vampire. Do you know what makes a vampire? Do you really? It's not the hair. Bah! Greasy kid stuff. It's not the cake made from your sister's satin bed sheets. No, it's the fangs that make the vampire. Now you too can have the fangs. Dress up for parties, frighten the trick-or-treaters on Halloween. These plastic marvels fit over your regular teeth. But once there, you'll be the hit of the party. Amaze and delight your goo friend. It is so much fun. I know. So, send for your fangs today. Send $2.98 to fangs. Box 1001, Central City, Tennessee. Or dial toll-free 800-D-R-A-C-U-L-A. Order before midnight tonight. That's an order. Welcome back, and here's what's new in entertainment. Think of it as modern art meets modern education. The next generation of contemporary artists are creating a multimedia spectacular in Toronto's East End. Our own Steve Darley had this report. Multimedia art exhibits are nothing new to the city of Toronto. This one, though, is a bit different. The artists are very young. The location is their school, William Burgess Elementary in East York. And for one night only, they transform the school into a live-action art gallery. In a tribute to Toronto's world-famous Nuit Blanche, they called the exhibit Nuit Burgess. The artists used a mix of styles from traditional paintbrushes to modern-day digital images. Performance art, including music and dance, also took center stage. The night was a celebration of multiculturalism. Teacher Mark Baker was quite literally thrilled with the event. His class performed their own version of Michael Jackson's Thriller. We decided not to have the conventional, um, you know, concert sort of thing, and we took a page out of the whole Nuit Blanche and decided to have lots of art installments all over the school, and uh, we decided to do uh, part of a, a dance, really, and so we decided to do the thriller dance. Hundreds gathered for the exhibition, and the school was buzzing with activity and excitement. Parents were thrilled and flocked the hallways and classrooms eager to see their children's creativity. Tasia Alexio Pipilas has a son in grade two. Both of them had been looking forward to the event for weeks. It's worth it because I see my child like looking forward every day coming to school. School principal Lynn Strangway was pleased that all 300 students were involved in the exhibition in one way or another. Even with a chaotic start, she can't wait for next year and the second installment of Nuit Burgess. Steve Darley, Observer Radio News, Toronto. The Scotiabank Theatre is hosting an advanced screening of the rock and roll vampire movie Suck, starring David Foley of The Kids in the Hall. Movie View Online wants your opinion on this possible cult classic. The screening begins tonight at 6.15. Make sure to RSVP at www.movie-view.com. 
It was a busy weekend at the box office. I Love You Man, starring Jason Segel and Paul Run, Rudd, earned just over $18 million in its opening weekend. After a year hiatus, Julia Roberts joined Clive Owen in the romantic spy comedy Duplicity, also released this weekend. The big draw, however, was the action-packed thriller Knowing, starring Nicolas Cage that racked in almost $25 million. Family and friends gathered to say their final farewells to Natasha Richardson. Richardson was laid to rest during a small private ceremony near her upstate New York home this, fr this past Friday. Celebrities such as Rafe Fiennes, Uma Thurman, and Alan Rickman joined husband Lee Liam Neeson and their children. Richardson died after hitting her head when she fell at Mont Tremblant. She was not wearing a helmet. A very sad situation that could have been so easily avoided. Steve? Thanks, Jenna, and thanks for listening. Stay with us here on Observer Radio News for updates throughout the afternoon.